when I wrote Never Scared, I knew it was going to be something special. Mm-hmm. I didn't know it was going to be this special. <laughs> but I knew it was going to be something special because at that time, I was feeling really, you know, like the world was against me. Mm. You know, I, I had lost a couple of record deals. We were signed to Tummy Boy. The LGs were signed to Tummy Boy. We were signed to another label. Mm. It wasn't happening. I was trying to feed kids, man. Yeah. So, I'm, you know, I'm over at the Oomp house, at Big Oomp's house. Shouts out to Big Oomp. Yes, sir. Oomp, what up, though? Yeah. And uh, I um, I was in a Young Blood session. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I write for everybody. So Come on now. Uh, so I was writing some hooks for the for a song the Young Bloods was doing. And I had wrote this one hook. I was like, yeah, that ain't it. If you know anything about a Young Blood session back then, they just had a beat going for y'all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the beat just be knocking, <laughs> boom, 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 all day beat just going loud, yeah. right? So I'm sitting there, you know, I'm writing, Pelly writing, which is Sean Paul, mm-hmm. uh, J Bo doing his thing, he writing, and I'm sitting there. I think, man, I think Jim, one of them Jim Crow dudes, and I think Motown might have been in there. I think maybe, mm-hmm. but um, I'm sitting there, man, and I'm just like writing, 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 and writing. I'm like, outside of da da. Outside, <laughs> but the song yeah. wasn't the same song as the the beat that it's on now, mm-hmm. right? So it's written. I wrote it. It was on a slower tempo, mm-hmm. so I can manipulate words any kind of way. So I wrote it there, and I said, "Oh man, this is crazy, mm-hmm. right? Man, this is crazy." Oh, I said, "It don't fit this beat though." I said, "I'll just keep it, right?" Yeah. So I ended up writing something else for the Young Bloods. I don't think it made it to the album or whatever. But so I went over, I went back home, mm-hmm. and a good friend of mine who stayed like maybe two houses down from me, Avery Johnson, who okay. produced an episode. Yeah. He called me up. He said, Hey Bone, man, I got this beat. Mm-hmm. I said, Cool. So I just walked over his house. He played the beat. <laughs> it came on. <laughs> And I had wrote an, I had I had did another hook to it. Come to find out, that one the hook. Avery told me the other day. He said, "Boom, man, remember you wrote you had put another hook on it first. What? I said, "Oh yeah." He said, "Yeah." I said, "Man, I don't even remember that." He said, "Hey, but it wasn't all that." I said, "That's probably why I don't even remember it." <laughs> right? I write so much stuff behind me. I'm, I went whatever, too. Whatever. But uh, but then I wrote that that hook, and I said, "Man, I think this might work." And I just said it to it, and yeah. it just came out like that. Cause I was so man. I tell you something, brother. When I tell you I was going through so much then, man. I was broke. I didn't have nothing, man. I had Come kids, <laughs> bro. That's a recipe, right? Man, now. I'm trying to tell you, <laughs> and and that's the anger, yeah. And that's the perseverance that I felt, yeah. Because I was going through so much, man. I had to show these motherfuckers. I ain't never scared. And I felt like that when I said it. Yeah. And when I, it was crazy, man. Like, outside. It was like a blur just came out of me, man. Yeah. And it felt so genuine to me. Mm-hmm. I ain't give a damn what nobody else felt about it. Yeah. Right? And it felt so genuine to me when I said it that I walked out the booth because I'm like that. Yeah. I said, what you think, Avery? He said, man, it's jamming. I said, yeah, all right, cool. Let's go to the next one. Right? Yeah. We did a whole nother beat. Another song, which was Gripping the Green. <laughs> you know that's my song. I know. Though. Yep. We ain't no doing Gripping the Green the same day we did Never Scared. Oh, hell no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same day. <laughs> same exact day, bro. We was on one that day. and um. So he produced both them damn tracks? Yeah, he produced both of them. Avery Johnson. Tell monster. Avery we need to do some conversating, man. Yeah, we do. Because, I mean, them we tricks do. right there, I got to yeah. talk to that man about that shit. Yeah, man, we do. Oh, we my do. God. Yeah, man. So you went from never scared to yeah. gripping the grain in yeah. the same session. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what writers do. Okay, so you telling me you had two lead tracks from what would be a number one hip-hop album. Yeah. Attention! Right. Did you realize at that moment when you was in there going crazy? Because obviously you went in there blacked out that goddamn yeah, yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you realize, oh, man, if I put just these two souls on the album no. together, it's going down. I, I never thought about music back then that way. It wasn't a business. It was it was love, inspiration. It was um, a space of total uh, power for me. Yeah. Call it arrogance, call it um, whatever you want to call it. 
I'm I was always in a space of I'm the hardest mother at walking. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. And I've always been like that. Mm-hmm. But I always knew that that was not a way to be because you can't beat everybody. I said this before. You can't yeah. Beat everybody. I just uh, but. I, I got myself in a space, man, where, you know, I was bodyguarding a lot of people back then, too. Little yeah. John, China, you know, I was bodyguarding a whole bunch of people. T.I. Yeah. So, for me, it was a, it was, it was just ordained to be that way. 